Hello, hello, welcome back. Today we are going to be doing top three in every category. This is going to be a luxury branded category and then I'll also upload a drugstore one for you as well because I'm not gonna lie. This was way more difficult than I thought that it was gonna be because I was really struggling because I wanted to do top three drugstore foundations, top three luxury foundations and put that all in one video but I was like that's gonna be way too much information and way too long so we're gonna do two separate videos and I'm really excited about this because I feel like it really made me think like what are your actual current top threes in every category so let's get started off with the one that I've been speaking about the longest it's from SK Lauder the futurist aqua brilliance watery glow primer so the thing I love about this is, well, all these primers in general, I don't like a silicone-y feeling on my skin. I feel like it's quite distracting. It just feels like another layer on my skin. So what I like to be left with is something that's almost tacky so that my makeup sticks to it and it feels really nice and moisturizing. What I like about this is, although it doesn't leave me with that like grippy, sticky base, I love how it feels like it really gets absorbed into my skin and my skin looks visibly more plush, it looks bouncy, it looks moisturized. I love the slight dewy sheen it leaves on the skin so it's really similar to that light glow that you get when you put a sunscreen on your skin so I absolutely just like love the way it makes my skin look and I love the long lasting sense of moisturization that I get from this primer so I love it year round but especially when I have drier, flaky, or just like visibly dull skin. I think this is always like the perfect base step to really get my makeup to just look good. And that's really what I look for in a primer. So another one that I really love is the True Skin Priming Serum from Ilia. This is a serum primer, so it really does get absorbed into the skin. And again, just leaves you with that really nice, bouncy, moisturized looking skin. But what I really think is unique about this one is you can prime your skin with it. It's going to increase the longevity, make your skin look nicer. But I also like using this on days where my foundation feels a little bit too thick or the formula is a little bit heavier and I really want to shear it down and break that formula down so that it blends out a lot easier. Absolutely love using this product for that. And because it is a primer, you can use it to cut down the thickness and, you know, almost like stickiness of a foundation without compromising on the longevity. So it does double duty in that way for me and I really, really like this one. And I've been using it for, I'd say over a year as well. So it's definitely one of my favorites and I've repurchased this one one time already. This last one is not a primer, but I use it as a primer. And when I tell you that I have been addicted to this product since I first purchased it, I am telling you, I have been addicted to it. So it's the Debronzy Anti-Pollution Sunshine Drops from D Drunk Elephant. Ooh, that is a mouthful. The thing that I think is so unique about this product is that when you apply it to your skin as a base, um, not only does it give you that gorgeous like bronze and warmth to your skin, so it really does wake up your skin tone and give you that little bit of sun-kissed color, which is uber flattering. The way it sets down on the skin is almost like a gel film, and I don't use the word film in a way to scare you off. I'm saying like it sets down to this really unique like gel-like layer that just makes your makeup glide over it like butter. It is absolutely incredible. It doesn't pill up. It doesn't, you know, feel heavy or mask like on the skin either and I just think that like little bit of jelly glass like finish that it gives to the skin just pairs so well to have foundation on top of it because it makes your foundation look more luminous and just more bouncy and fresh and I just love these love using them as a primer but you can also uh, wear it as a bronzer as well but definitely a star as a priming product in my opinion luminizers one of my favorite makeup products ever. I have three, two are Charlotte Tilbury, but I absolutely love her luminizers. Uh, the first is the Hollywood Flawless Filter. Been such a loyal fan of this since I first purchased it. I love that it has this skin tint to it, so it does provide you with a subtle amount of coverage. Really gorgeous, luminous, mega strobe on the skin, but can easily be toned down by adding a little bit of foundation to the product, or you can spot conceal if you choose to wear it on its own, but 
such a unique, beautiful, intense strobe that I actually think is really flattering, and I love that. Um, something from Charlotte that's another big time favorite that is a lot more subtle is Wonder Glow. So you can wear this again on its own. I still think it has the ability to softly blur out imperfections. And the formula of this is a little bit different. It's quite moisturizing and applies much like a gel-like consistency. And it does have this unique ability to really just softly blur out imperfections is it going to cover them or give them any type of coverage no but because of that soft focus reflection that the product has it does make your skin look better on its own so honestly this with a little bit of concealer could really perk up the complexion and i just think that this is so beautiful it's so nice if you have a dull skin type luminizer can just rock your world and completely change the way your skin looks it really just wakes you up and gets you looking nice and glowy now the last one i want to mention is the dior backstage luminizer this is a big time favorite for me because it is a dry formula so i love the way that this sets down almost instantaneously and it doesn't leave any feeling of product on the skin so you can mix this in with literally any foundation and i never have issues with it changing the formula now obviously it's going to make the finish a lot more luminous and radiant because this is quite an intense strobe but the formula isn't going to get any more creamy or any more dewy you know it's not going to add any sheen from like an oil perspective so i absolutely love this it is intense it is definitely one of the most strong illuminators i have in my collection but the formula is just so spot on you can wear it as a highlight on the skin as well but um just one of my absolute favorite and foolproof luminizers that I can mix in with anything without compromising on formula. Foundations were one of those categories where I was instantly like, I know what my favorites are because I'm so loyal to them. So Giorgio Armani Luminous Silk Foundation, I think it's perfect. It's not too much coverage. It's not too little coverage. It's not too dewy. I know it says it's luminous, but it's more of like a luminous skin finish. It still does set down to quite a soft powder finish but still looks skin like and has a little bit of light reflection to it i just i love it so much it's lightweight it's beautiful it always looks really great in photographs and on video as well and i'm truly obsessed with that now the other one which i think really has the best staying power and really great longevity and i've been a very big fan of as well is the airbrush flawless foundation from charlotte tilbury stays all day and all night i would agree with that um, this one you can tell by the bottle. I've been using it constantly. I really like this during the summer or just on days where I really want to ensure that my makeup's going to last as long as possible. So I absolutely adore this one. Something I should let you know about this foundation though is it does oxidize. So it goes about a shade to a shade and a half darker depending on the shade that you get. But Charlotte Tilbury does show you the way that they set down when they oxidize. You'll see on like swatches on an arm um, what they look like once they set because when you're applying it it almost goes on like way too light but then it sets down and it matches your skin tone or goes a little bit darker depending on the shade that you pick um, and then the last one is going to be a sad one but I'm so glad that I actually did purchase this even though I think it's going to just be gone forever it's the Becca Ultimate Coverage 24 Hour Foundation I got the shade Olive and I wish I hope that someone will come out with a reformulation of this or somebody will, you know, come out with an exact dupe of this foundation because I think that this foundation is so beautiful, so perfect. The shade Olive, I have never found a foundation that matches me this perfectly. And I feel like I'm not even engaged, but I'd be like, this would be what I would want to wear on my wedding day. Oh gosh, you guys, this is just so incredibly stunning. The coverage is customizable. It looks creamy and bouncy on your skin and it's so beautiful. And I'm wearing it today. It's the foundation that I have on my skin. Um, truly sad to see this one go. I hope that like Becca revives it or Becca comes back and this will still exist because I don't know. I'm like, should I just like find another olive bottle and then freeze it and save it for special occasions thaw it out whenever i need it oh yo yo concealers this was a little bit of a difficult one so i love concealer it's one of my favorite makeup products as well but 
I chose the current top three and they're pretty much the ones that I've talked about the longest as well. So NARS Radiant Creamy, endlessly a favorite of mine because of how versatile this concealer is. You can wear it really sheared out and because it's got that nice creamy formula, it never ever looks dry on the skin. You know how sometimes when you have a more full coverage concealer and you shear it out, it can almost make the skin look dry because it's like the pigment can't be blended out evenly. It just looks patchy and weird. I never have that with this one. I love how it really just brightens up my under eye and really gives me that gorgeous beamed up look that I crave. Number two is going to Charlotte Tilbury Magic Away Concealer. Again, been a repurchase so many times because this just performs. The longevity on this is incredible. It really stays put for long periods of time, even when it's really hot and I'm sweating. I like the thick paste-like consistency of the formula because I do find that to help increase the longevity as well. And if the sponge on the product is what bothers you, I always remove it and then you'll just have direct access to the concealer. Um, I love this under the eyes, and again, because of that like paste-like formula, um, really great for concealing blemishes as well. The last one I wanna mention is a newer favorite, but I've been really impressed with it, and it's what I'm actually wearing under my eyes today. It's the Fenty Bright Fix Eye Brightener in Deep Butter. This is really unique because it gives me a ton of brightness without a ton of extra coverage. So I'll apply my foundation as I typically would and then use this just to add some brightness and it almost puts like a milky veil of coverage under the eyes but really gives me that beamed up, brightened looking under eye that I really crave and I think it makes a pretty liquid eye, liquid highlighter as well. Um, it's obviously not gonna give you like a luminous strobe but to just add a little bit more dimension, if you wanna put like a lighter skin tone shade on the high points of the face, it works really well for that as well. And just absolutely, like, I love the formula of this. It is so fluid and lightweight. Setting powder, again, was easy because I don't like many setting powders and I can just breeze right through these because I love these. And as many of you know, if I can skip out on powder, I'm gonna skip out on powder because I do wear a lot of powder, bronzer, blush, highlight, things like that. And I do think that attributes to increasing your makeup longevity. Even though it's not like a setting powder, you're putting powder on top of your makeup, so it's gonna make it stay put a little bit longer. So I love the Laura Mercier Translucent Honey. I also like the original and the glow version as well, but I'm gonna say Honey is the best because it's got this gorgeous like caramel, honey tone to it so it never makes a medium skin tone look chalky or ashy that's one of my biggest problems i feel like powders always look so unflattering on my skin because i am so like yellowy and warm and golden and then when it like goes on my skin it, i get this like weird white cast it looks ashy and dry and just so unflattering so i absolutely love this um, and it's really a great almost like creamy powder so it never makes you look chalky now the other one is the Cloud Set from Kosas. Loving this, it's really similar to the Laura Mercier Candle Glow Powder I loved so much, but I'm pretty sure that was discontinued and then I just haven't checked to see if it came back recently, but you can see in the pan, um, it reflects a little bit of light, so it's got a really nice, gorgeous, luminous finish to it. And I like how this is like a baked powder, so it just really pretty, really soft and light. Now the other powder I really love is from Pat McGrath. And I've spoken about this one many times as well. It's the uh, under eye setting powder. This is in the shade medium. And this essentially disappears. But you have to try this. If you are someone who really doesn't like powder. You're like no Daisy. I don't want to try any powder. But I need a powder. Um, I really do think setting the under eye. Is probably the most beneficial part of the face to set. Especially if you wear mascara. Because it helps prevent the mascara from smudging around the eye area as well as helping those concealer products from migrating or settling into fine lines around the face. This feels like butter, like silk. I mean, I don't know how this is formulated. I have never ever felt a powder like this. You just need to go in Sephora and touch it. When you touch this powder on your fingertip, you will be like, okay, yes, that can go under my under eye because it feels like silk. It does not creep up or dry or chalk out your under eye. And even when I've applied it to the back of my hand, when I touch it with my finger where the powder is on the skin, it like, it just, it feels so silky. It feels so nice. 
I feel like y'all know bronzer is my absolute favorite makeup product and this is the one that I really struggled with this category because I was like do I want to do creams do I want to do glowy do I want to do mattes what do I want to do I was like I don't really know where I want to go with this so I was like think about the only three you would pick if you had to and this was hard I'm gonna have to go with number one Benefit Hula. I know that this is considered like chuggy now. I don't know why because this is such a great bronzer and I feel like this is the bronzer that I've consistently used for so long because it's not too warm, it's not too cool. It is just the right shade for my skin tone personally to add dimension back into my face when I have a, you know, like a little bit more of a full coverage base and I really want to shadow, put the shadows back on my face and I just, I love it. I try other contour powders, which I like, but I always come back to Benefit Hula. It is my absolute favorite contour and um, just also for like a nice natural light bronze as well. Next up, we have Tom Ford Shade and Illuminate, the cream bronzer, which is absolutely divine, absolutely addicting. I love this so much. If you want a cream bronzer that will literally look like it's melted into your skin to where it blends in so beautifully and really just gives you that like cool surfer girl beach chick i'm not wearing any makeup my skin is just naturally bronzy and dewy the beautiful thing about cream bronzers is the texture really molds with your skin and just creates this gorgeous fusion of the bronze and your skin and it just is truly incredible so tom ford had to be number two and then number three is a newer one but i am addicted to it and have been using it ever since i tried it as a bronzer it's the Giorgio armani luminous silk glow fusion powder i got mine in 11.5 oh my gosh this is gorgeous you can see it in the sunlight it's got this luminous pearl finish to it the formula of the powder itself is so emollient and creamy and it just blends out over your skin it looks airbrushed it looks beautiful i love how this shade 11.5 has this gorgeous deep red undertone so it looks really natural and just truly looks like your skin when you've been out in the sun because you get that little bit of a flush and i just exquisite 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 beautiful bronzer moving on to blush the first one is she's so la from patrick ta this is actually a blush i purchased based on so many recommendations from y'all and Ever since I bought it, it's been my blush every day, pretty much every time I do my makeup. I just dig these nude flushes so much. The cream I don't use quite as much, but the powder. I wear this almost every single day because it goes with everything. It is not distracting. It goes with your natural skin tone and really just gives you that like natural fleshy looking flush. So it's not, it's just not gonna compete with any other makeup product that you wear with it. And I really like that it's got a little bit of a luminous finish to it. This one does too as well, but this one's a little bit more peachy and I think super flattering. It's actually the blush that I'm wearing today. This is Like Me, Love Me from MAC, so it's a mineralized blush. I have this on the cheeks, the apples on my cheek, and then I also have a little bit on my eyelid as well. I love apricot tones. I think it's one of the shades that I can actually really get down with because I find apricot and peach to really go with my skin tone, and I'm not a big blush girl. Like, I'm very picky. I like berries, peaches, and nudes <laughs> the last blush is from nude sticks it's sun kissed <gasps> no oh my gosh so i've been wearing sun kissed a lot i cannot believe this happened i've been wearing sun kissed and i have had it in my everyday makeup bag and i turned off my ac and my makeup bag was close to the window and it melted into the lid this is not tragic i can get it out but it's still really sad ah okay so sunkissed is a perfect sunkissed blush um it's a really beautiful i might as well just swatch it because it's right there in the lid um it's a really nice fleshy deeper nude uh super beautiful and really shears out i love wearing this on my eyes cheeks and my lips i just think this is such a flattering shade and i love 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 nude sticks cream blushes it was actually difficult to choose between this bareback and deep maple because these nude sticks nudies are always in my everyday like makeup area 
When it comes to highlighter, I am really picky because I like super natural filtered looking highlights. I really don't like them to be distracting or like too overpowering on my skin because I really like to focus on making the base look luminous and I don't like to overdo it with even more highlight on top. So I tend to go for highlights that are glossy and glowy and just like a light filter of shimmer. So I love stick highlights. Speaking of nude sticks, <laughs> I really like the Bubbly BB um, highlight. I think this is so beautiful and just a really nice light balmy highlight that just barely catches the light and i think that this doesn't stay sticky it actually feels really nice and just like a little bit moisturizing on the skin now the other one that's a little bit more of a dry balm is the pat mcgrath highlighter but this also comes with a balm on the other side so that's the nice thing about this you can customize how glossy or dewy you want this to look depending on how much of the balm you use and the highlighter itself is actually quite dry of a cream so it doesn't feel sticky on your skin and if you apply just a little bit it's practically dry to the touch to where it almost even feels like a powder so i absolutely love stick highlights for most of the time now i am also in love with this highlight i've recommended it countless times since i've purchased it it's the estee lauder heat wave jelly powder this is phenomenal it's incredible um really gives you the ability to go full on foliage if you really apply it intensely but because it's like that you can use the tiniest bit and get the most impactful glossy glowy skin but it's a powder so you really get the best of both worlds you get that like glossy foiled look but you can make it subtle and it really just looks so incredible and it's not sticky. You don't feel it like you do with these. When it comes to eyeshadow, y'all know, I don't really reach for palettes quite as much. I really reach for single shades. So I picked my top three favorite single shades. So two are <laughs> Laura Mercier Eye Caviar Eye Sticks. I love these, I adore these. I think these are some of the best. Um, my two most worn shades are Copper, which is an uber flattering, ultra gorgeous, metallic copper shade and then burnished bronze which again is a really beautiful like redwood undertoned bronze and just such flattering shades for a brunette like if you have brown hair brown eyes definitely two shades to get on your radar because these are so flattering and then the other one is the cream and powder eye color from tom ford in golden peach i've spoken about this so many times i reach for this at least once a week if not more i absolutely love that peachy shade and then you do have a powder shimmer on top which i don't find myself using quite as much but so nice because you can just throw these in your everyday makeup bag they don't take up the bulk space of a palette and they just always look good and they are all all three of these are really long lasting and you can wear them on them on their own but you can also put um, powder shadows on top if you want a little bit more dimension i'm cheating a bit with brows because i have one brow pencil that i want to shout out and three brow gel products that i want to shout out so the brow pencil that i've been the most impressed with is the kosas airbrow i've repurchased this twice since i've had it because i really like it this one is actually well i guess there's still a little bit left in there but um this is the one that i had completely used up and i was about to get rid of but there's still a little tiny nub in there Generally speaking, brow pencils don't last me more than a month to two months. So I don't love splurging on them because I go through them so quick. But the thing with certain brow pencils that I find are worth the splurge is like the formula of the pencil and the shade match. Sometimes you just can't beat the shade match with these higher end brow pencils and the Kosas Brow Pop. It's a perfect shade match. I really like this and uh a great one and then i also love the kosas airbrow brow gel this will give you a little bit of tint and it really almost feels like a liquid hairspray in your brow so it really keeps them fluffed up and you can really manipulate the brow but it'll dry down so it won't stay tacky on your brows and it really just gives you it just feels like hairspray on your brows i don't know how else to explain it i love it though and i like that it has a tint to it because this is a great one and done brow product now, if you're somebody that wants something that's a little bit more pomade or like gluey, I love this. It's growing on me, but it's definitely in my top three. So I, I don't know how I feel about this completely yet, but I'm liking it for 
I'm reaching for it. So I like it. I don't know. We will see where I'm at in a couple months with this. It's the Reefy Brow Sculpt. I love the control that this gives me on my brows. I love how it's like gluey and ultra sticky. And I like that you have the um, brow comb on the other end. So I do love this. But the one, my favorite of all time pretty much, is the uh, Brow Freeze Styling Wax from Anastasia. This is so good. Uh, it's this clear, unique brow gel. I've never used anything quite like this. It dries down. It will shellac your brows in place. They will stay put. You can sweat. They will stay exactly where you've placed them. And uh, complete control over your brows, 100%. You can get feathery brows. You can get shellac brows. You can get like really sleek, sharp looking brows. Um, you can really control each and every brow. So. I cheated. I've got four brow favorites, but they're all really great. Moving into eyeliner, I thought this was kind of funny because with any of these categories, had you asked me two years ago, even a year ago, the products would probably all be completely different. But especially with eyeliner, I think I would have done like three liquid eyeliners. And now I'm like, liquid eyeliner? I don't really want anything to do with it right now. I'm just, I'm loving pencils and the different intensities you can create with them and just the effect. I like them so much more. You can do like hazy, smudgy, smokiness and um, you can wear them as eyeshadow as well. So I love them. So uh, how many times did I say so right there? Anyway, uh, by Mario, the perfect brown. Literally the perfect brown. I love this eye pencil so much. So ultra pigmented, gorgeous, deep espresso brown got a little bit of warmth to it so I feel like this is one of those browns that will really make brown eyes sparkle and it lasts a really long time you can put it in the waterline and the tight line as well but also smudges out gorgeously as well um, and then we have the Jane Iredell black brown pencil which I don't think I talked about that much on my channel now this Jane Iredell pencil is such a beautiful like neutral borderline cool pulling brown on my skin and I like how it's not fully black, but it's not fully brown, so you really get a good amount of intensity from it, and I just think that this is ultra flattering on the top lash line and just really smudged out and then smoked out on the lower lash line as well. And then this one is from Urban Decay, which I don't know how many times I've repurchased this at this point. I really like this pencil. This is Roach, which is a sparkling, almost like warm whiskey brown with some shimmer to it. You can see it reflecting off the back of my hand it really does create quite a bit of light reflection but this is a shade that you can wear on its own blend it out all over your eyelid and you will have a gorgeous a smoky eye so it's truly one of those shadows that you can use as eyeliner or as eyeshadow and i'm always really happy with it but um, i love how these are all different shades of brown and I don't really find myself reaching for black eyeliner quite as much so the Jane Iredell one is about as dark as I would go but I absolutely love these eye pencils. Mascara was another uh, really easy category for me because my favorite mascara of all time, many of you probably know this, uh, the Dior Show Waterproof. There's not much to say about this other than I do think that this mascara is a work of art. Uh, the brush, the formula, the intensity it creates, um, it's just so exceptional. The length, the volume, it gives you like the perfect amount of wispiness. It really gives you those film noir lashes and it's just incredible. I am always so happy with the intensity, the length, the volume, just everything about the way my lashes look when I use this. I am so in love with it. And then I'm also, I guess you could just say I'm like super into Dior mascaras because the other one I chose was the Dior Over Curl Mascara. This is a newer favorite, but loving the effect of this as well. So it's got a curved brush on it. And the unique thing about the Dior Over Curl is that when the formula starts drying down, it's almost like it tightens. So it like scoops the lashes inward and you do get a more exaggerated curl. It is quite exceptional in that sense that I think if you had a naturally curled lash if you paired it with this you'd probably get a really amazing like open eye effect i have straight lashes so i just get like a little bit of a bend but when i pair it with curled lashes i really get that like opened up doll eye effect because it really widens those lashes out 
And then the other one is the Sumptuous Extreme Mascara from Estee Lauder. Um, this one's got more of that like Christmas tree shaped brush, but I do like that it tapers toward the end so you can really still get into those tinier areas of the eye. This one just creates extreme volume. So on its own, it's not gonna give you a ton of length. It's just really gonna give you a lot of volume. What I really like doing is using this as a volumizing mascara paired with something that's more lengthening. So I like using this as a layering mascara, but it also looks really great and will give you tons of volume on its own. I prefer this on its own when my lashes are more grown out from Latisse, but now that they're like a little bit shorter, it just kind of makes them look stumpy. So I pair it with a lengthening mascara. So I really get a lot of, um, you know, different effects. We'll move into setting sprays and then finish off with the lip products. So the first setting spray is no surprise to any of you who have been watching me, the Tatcha Dewy Luminous Skin Mist. This really does it all. It's milky, it's moisturizing, it's luminizing. It's gonna leave you with that really plump, bouncy looking baby skin. It sets your makeup by taking away any of the cakiness or powderiness. If you feel like your skin is still looking a little bit too um, like dull or dry, you can spray this on and it completely negates all of those negative things and it just really makes your skin look so good. I love the long lasting sense of hydration that this gives my skin. And I just really feel like this is the best dewy skin mist ever. I will never not repurchase this. I am truly like so loyal to that. And then the other one, which is a little bit softer in terms of luminosity, but still gives me like a really nice amount of glow is the Veil Soft Focus Setting Spray from Hourglass. Thoroughly enjoy this one as well. I do really like the misting nozzle on this. I think it really gives you a nice light, even coat of misting as well. Not quite as luminous as the Tatcha one, but more so gonna leave you with a little bit more of like a glossy sheen on the skin. So I love this when I don't want anything that's gonna be too pearlized, but between the two of these, I don't think you can go wrong. These are my favorites. I absolutely love these. My favorite setting spray when it comes to significantly increased longevity, and I don't think this has any competitors that I've tried yet that work as well as this one, it's the Charlotte Tilbury Airbrush Flawless Setting Spray. I notice such a huge difference in the way my makeup lasts when I wear this, and I have a trick with it. So what I do is after skincare, but before any other makeup product, I thoroughly coat my skin with this. Then after I've done foundation and concealer, so all my liquid base products, I do another spray, let it dry, and then I do all my powder products, and then once I've done all the powder and setting, you know, blush, highlight, bronzer, all of that, all those powder products, I set for a third time. So I do three layers of this, and I'm not exaggerating you when I say that I did my makeup at 5.30, so let's say I was done doing my makeup by six. Let's give it a little bit of extra time. Um, so 6 a.m. till 10 p.m. at night, I could have gone hours past that. My makeup still looked fresh at night. I am not kidding you. Try my technique, do the three layers in between, do the little sandwiches. This will make your makeup last significantly longer. I think it will blow you away. My top three favorite lip pencils, we're gonna go with Lancome. This is the shade Ideal, which is 254. A really gorgeous, rosy, but nude shade that has incredible longevity. This is very long wearing, and I really love that about this lip pencil. And then we have Urban Decay 1993. I was debating between this and Liar, but 1993 slightly more brown toned, so I reach for this a little bit more. And technically, I've purchased this twice, so I've used one of these up completely, and I really love this shade. Again, this is a really nice long lasting one, so great if you want that added boost of longevity and really want a lip pencil that will last you for multiple hours. My last one is MAC Oral classic, but uh, again, have been wearing it for years, and I just, I love this one so much. I just think it's a really flattering, fleshy mauve tone that really has never failed me, and I, it pairs so well with other lip colors, and the reason I chose all three of these is because I really think they pair so well with anything, and they're great for overlining, because you know, I love to overline my lips. Moving into glosses, and again, I was like, ah, you could have asked me this three months ago and I would have picked three completely different ones. But the first is from Tower 28. It's in the shade Almond. This gorgeous milky chocolate brown, 
so shiny, so juicy. It makes your lo lips look so glossy and wet. I am truly like a, such a big fan of the Tower 28 glosses. Um, the other one is the Pat McGrath Faux Real Lust Gloss. I've actually talked about this one for quite some time. This is like the ultimate nude lip gloss that I've ever found. I just, I love this so much. It's beige, but it doesn't make you look dead. And especially if you have brown hair and brown eyes, please try this out. Pair it with a brown lip liner and a smoky eye and you will look like a supermodel. I am telling you, this is one of those colors that will make brown eyes sparkle. It's really like finding the right lip and the right eye colors to pair with brown eyes is really what makes um, brown eyes pop in my opinion. Last one is actually one of my everyday staples. It's the Merit Au Naturel lip color in, well, it's in the shade Au Naturel, but it's the tinted lip oil. Beautiful, perfect peach with just enough brown to it that it doesn't wash you out and it doesn't look too distracting. Like it is truly the perfect peach that I have found so far. I absolutely love this. This is actually the lip color that I was wearing today when we started the video, but probably talked it all off by now. Pause, I forgot to mention this and I was actually debating between mentioning this or the Estee Lauder mascara. So can we do a little important announcement? I would actually sub the Estee Lauder recommendation for this lash primer and that's what I was planning on doing, but this was underneath the bucket, so I didn't see it. It is the Lancome Sills Booster Lash Primer. So you can see, it's got a little fiber brush and the product itself is white. If you don't wanna splurge on a luxury mascara, I don't blame you. A lot of times people don't feel that they're worth it, but this primer will boost the length, volume, intensity of any mascara tenfold. I mean, this is absolutely incredible. I can't recommend this enough. I've been using this for a couple years. My grandma is actually the one who got me turned on to it because she's such a hardcore Lancome woman. And this really, if you wear just like a basic mascara and you really wanna be able to take it to nighttime and really increase the length and the volume on your lashes, this is what you need. It can take a $3 mascara and really just make it incredible and super amazing. So I would sub this for the Estee Lauder one because you can pair this with anything else and make it 10 times better. It is such an incredible lash primer, so worth the splurge. And we can go back into lips to finish off this video. First is gonna be a well-loved NARS Bahama lipstick. I need to get a better sharpener for this, but uh, NARS Bahama, it's always been one of my favorites gorgeous like deep rosy mauve tone and then we have charlotte tilbury's yes honey which is one of my favorite nudes this is like the perfect caramelly yellow beige nude to where it doesn't make a brunette with olive skin look washed out it's really creamy really gorgeous i love charlotte tilbury's lipsticks i was really debating between um choosing yes honey and very victoria but ended up going with Yes, honey, because I think it's just a little bit more special. And then the last lip color favorite is the Armani Lip Power in the shade 200. This is stunning and one of the colors that I'm gonna be recommending a lot. It is creamy, it is luscious, and it's got that really nice glossy finish to it. I love the Armani Lip Powers. I know I did a sponsorship with them, but like genuinely, I had to wipe my hand off, uh, genuinely was so excited to be working with them again because I love Armani Beauty and I think the lip powers are incredible. Right now, the shade 200 has been the one that I've been keeping in my purse because I just think it's so nice and flattering and you can wear it during the day or at night. And especially if you put this with the Tower 28, it just gives you the most gorgeous, like milky, creamy nude. So I just, I love these. I'd have to recommend those a lot as well. Oh my gosh, I've been talking for literally an hour and 42 minutes, so this is gonna be a fun edit. Um, but I hope you enjoyed this. I am gonna be getting a drugstore version up for you as well so that we can have the two. And I also think this could be really fun to do like hair care, skin care. But <laughs> thank you so much for watching this and I will see you in my next video. I would love it so much if you would subscribe and I would also love it so much if you would come follow me on Instagram. That that would mean so much to me but other than that I will see you in my next one bye everyone